Hello and welcome um, to this series of, on mindful living. Um, I'm Margaret Butler and I'm a mindfulness meditation teacher. And meditation has been part of my life for a long time and I've found the benefits um, physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually um, to be quite profound. So I like to share um, this information with people. And this is how this series of talks about mindfulness meditations come about. Um, particularly at the moment when we're going through this um, pandemic, then being able to spend some time mindfully during your day can be very, very beneficial. And for people that don't find meditation appeals to them, then learning how to do some activities mindfully during your day can bring about the same health benefits. Um, research into this has, has shown that the brain will have the same positive changes if you're doing an activity mindfully or if you're doing a meditation. So I think that's quite exciting actually. So at the moment, when we're going through this pandemic, then we are um, much more prone to stress and anxiety, um, perhaps even depression. We've really had to change our way of life in many ways and this has brought up challenges. Um, to all of us, you know, whether you're an older person like myself, then we no longer have contact with our grandchildren. Um, we can't go to all the different groups that usually feel us, make us feel connected and fulfilled. If you're a young mum, then you're at home with your children all the time. There's no play groups, there's no coffee mornings with your friends. If your children are at school, then chances are you're homeschooling them. And there's the worry associated with that, that you, can you do this? And also, because your children are there all the time, you don't have any real time for yourself or time to do all the other tasks that, that are in your everyday life. Um, so having to distance ourselves socially brings a lot of um, challenges as well. And even um, with your partner, then um, stuff can come up and you've got to change routines and, and all this sort of thing. So just listening to the news as a start can bring about um, a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry. And so learning a few practices um, to mitigate this anxiety in your life at the moment can be very, very helpful, both physically and mentally with your health. And these practices then can become go ongoing once we've got through this pandemic. Um, if you keep these practices in your life, then you really do recruit the um, health benefits from it. And in another session, I'm going to talk to you about stress and how this affects your life. And you'll then really understand the benefits of taking a few moments um, throughout your day to bring about the effect of um, the relaxation response. To start with, I'm going to, we're going to do some mini meditations. And this just means that we're going to stop for as little as 30 seconds or perhaps up to five minutes and focus on our breath or focus on one of the other senses, which we will do one shortly. Even just stopping for 30 seconds during your busy day, um, particularly if you can do it um, a few times, can bring about the relaxation response in your, in your body. And this can mitigate the effects of the stress that, that this can be in your body. So if we do a, um, a short mind mini meditation now of about three to four minutes, then you'll get a much better idea of, of what I'm talking about. So I'd like to invite you to to do that. Just find what I need. So when you do meditation at any um, length of time, you can do it in sitting, you can do it in standing, or you can do it in lying down. If you're doing a longer meditation, which again we will do in a later session, then obviously sitting or lying down is probably easier. But if you've only just got a few minutes or a few seconds, then if you just do a mini meditation standing up when you're waiting or, or whatever, then that is, is fine as well. For now, I assume that most of you are sitting down. So um, that's the focus that we'll take for this particular meditation. So just sit comfortably where you are and gently close your eyes or cast them downwards if you prefer. Now take a long, slow, deep breath right to the bottom of your lungs and sigh it out. Now 
In this case, you can breathe in and out through nose or the mouth. Mouth, in through your nose, whatever is right for you. Now take another deep breath right to the bottom of your lungs and just check this time that that is where the air is going and that you're not hunching up your shoulders with the effort and breathing shallowly. And again. And this time, as you breathe out, allow yourself to relax. Just check that your jaw is relaxing, your shoulders, tummy, thighs. Taking another breath right in and breathing out the tension and just relax. And once more, right to the bottom of your lungs and out. Breathing out the tension. And now just allow your breathing to return to its normal, natural rhythm, whatever is right for you. There is no need to change it in any way. And now we're going to notice any sounds around us. Simply noticing them, not judging them, but just allowing them to come to you. They may be far away or close by. Just noticing any sounds, taking your attention in. And as you do this, feel the flow of your breath, just coming and going. And now, take your awareness to where you are sitting, feeling into the sensation of contact with your seat, or if you're standing, the pressure of your feet on the floor or the ground. Just really feel maybe your back's leaning against the seat, your buttocks on the seat. Just feel this contact of sensation of touch. Focus on the touch of the fabric of your clothing. Perhaps the skin on skin contact if your hands are clasped. Stay with these sensations of touch and as you do, feel the flow of the breath. Just coming and going. And now, as we finish our meditation, just take a slightly deeper breath or two, perhaps wriggle your fingers or toes, and when you feel ready, you can just open your eyes. You can spend as long as you like um, with this particular meditation, but to be effective, it doesn't have to be um, for a long time. So what is happening here, as you focus on your breath or notice the sounds or become aware of where your body is through the sensation of touch, you are stopping that incessant train of thoughts you have just for a few moments. You've brought yourself into this very present moment right here and right now. And so you've actually brought about the relaxation response in your body and wow, that is a real gift to yourself, believe me. You can use this particular meditation in three different ways. Um, first of all, you can just take the breathing part, and that can be as little as 30 seconds. So that really um, deep breathing, you just pause, take a few moments to, to deep breathe, focus on your breath, let all the tension go, relax, and then go on with whatever you need to be doing. 
if you've got a little bit more time, then you can take the, the sounds in. You can do the breathing and then focus on the sounds. Then off you go at the end of that. But even a little bit more time, then you can bring in the sensation of touch wherever you are standing or sitting. And so this, um, it can be as short or as long as you like. So there's no excuse not to do it because you haven't got time because it's just a matter of spending 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, whatever suits you at the time. I think um, taking shopping at the moment is a good example here of how we can use the very first part of the breathing. Like shopping for a lot of us can be stressful at any time, but right now at this point in time, it seems to be extra stressful. You know, first of all, we've got to get to the supermarket, we've got to sanitise our hands, we've got to get the trolley, uh, we've got to be mindful of social distancing all the time that we're in the shop. And then we get go to get something that we want and it's not there. So then we have to think about another product and, and so it goes on. And then we get to the checkout and once again, we have, might have to queue and be mindful of social distancing. We see a friend and we want to stop and have a chat, but then we have to think about that social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. So once you get through that checkout and you get back to the car and you load up your groceries and you take the trolley back, you flop into the seat and you think, oh, right. And then before you go home, because already your mind is probably thinking of all the extra little things that you need to do to keep your family and homes um, safe and clean, just take a few moments before you switch the ignition on. Just sit there. Gently close your eyes if you wish and take some deep breaths right to the bottom of your lungs and sigh them out. And as you do that, you sigh out the tension that you've gathered through the whole shopping process. This brings about the relaxation effect in your body, gets rid of some of those effects of stress, and then you can set off home. Your body will thank you for stopping briefly, believe me. So, and then you can go, you know, in other situations, as I say, you can do a longer meditation, just a few more minutes with the sounds or with the sensation of touch. It is possible to use other sensations we have of um, smell and taste and sight. And we will talk about that at a later date. Talking about other sensations um, of, of, that we have of smell and taste and sight. And we will do that at a later date. But I just want to sow a seed here for you regarding eating and thus using the sense of taste. As we find ourselves more at home and sometimes at a loose end, then we do have the tendency to snack more or make yet again another cup of tea. So as you reach for the chocolate or the biscuit or the apple and take a bite, really savour that bite and the subsequent taste. Chocolate is an excellent example here. Have it by all means, but really enjoy it by taking a long time to taste each um, square, rolling it around in your mouth, allowing it to melt, really, really tasting it. And chances are you will eat far less of that chocolate bar if you do it this way, and you'll be just as satisfied. It stops you from gulping the whole block um, anyway, any quickly. And a cup is the same time, is the same. Take the time to really focus on having your beverage. You know, you can go right to the beginning of the process. You think, I'll have a cup of tea, so that you think about boiling the kettle. You choose your cup carefully. You decide if, if it's tea, if it's going to be a pot, or whether it's going to be a tea bag. You choose whatever beverage it is. You think about pouring water in. And then when you sit down, you really savour the, the, the taste, the smell, the warmth of the cup, et cetera, et cetera. You can do this process with people around you, but you may like to just do this process one day, have a mindful cup of tea by yourself, just focusing on that process of the tea and drinking the tea. And this, in a turn, is bringing about that relaxation response in your body. So there are quite a few um, ways that we can bring this mindfulness into our daily life. Um, and to, to do that, I just want to take a few moments to go through this definition of what mindfulness is with you. Because this is what happens when we meditate. But if we take these, um, these parts and focus, 
and apply them to the things that we're doing during the day, then it becomes a mindfulness activity and you get the subsequent um, health benefits, the subsequent positive changes in your brain. So mindfulness is um, paying attention to something, anything you, that you choose. So it could be your meditation or it could be um, going for a walk or it could be doing your knitting or it could be having a cup of tea, etc. So the first step is to choose your activity. And then mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way. And that is that you've focused on the um, attention on your chosen task. So you don't do it multitasking. You don't do it thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner and et cetera, et cetera. You just choose that task and then you focus on it on purpose. And this is important because we are actually in this process telling the brain that this is what we have consciously chosen to do. And we don't want the brain to be interrupting us and telling us that really we should be thinking about dinner or we should be doing this or doing that. So with mindfulness is paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment. And this means dismissing all thoughts of the past and the present at this time. So if you're sitting doing something, you don't think about what you could have done in the past with it or what you're going to do with in the present. You're focusing on the activity itself right here and right now. The last step is non-judgmentally, and that is the focus is on the process and not the outcome. So it's important, that's important, and we're going to talk more about that in terms of meditation later on. But say you have chosen to do a craft activity, then just let's take knitting as an example. So you're there, you're focusing on the process of the needles, the wool, the feel of the yarn, etc., etc. Thought pops into your head and you think, oh, I didn't um, defrost anything for dinner. So then that, that little bit of um, niggle, what am I going to do now? So if that happens, then you just go back to the focus of, of what you're doing with your knitting. At the end of that time, don't look at your knitting and think, oh, that's not very good. Or don't look at it and think, wow, I did well there. Just put the knitting down, take a few deep breaths and go on with your daily life. You can look at it later and you can judge it or change it or unpick it or whatever you like. But to get real the effects of the mindfulness in what you're doing, then just don't judge it. And as I say, the same applies to our, um, to our meditation. So I've got a little bit of a list of here of how we can do things mindfully in our everyday life. Um, there's the stopping briefly and consciously taking some slow deep breaths. If you go for a walk, if you like walking, just focus on your surrounds and the feel of your body as you walk. Not thinking, thinking, thinking. You know, sometimes I love to walk and sometimes I need to plan my day while I'm walking because that's the only time I've got to do that. But other times I really just focus on the actual walk itself and sometimes even just on what my body is doing, not even what my surrounds are. As we've talked about, we can have a cup of tea or coffee and focusing on the making and drinking of this. Eating, consciously chewing and saving our food. Now showering or cleaning our teeth. Now that's something that we have to do most days, particularly cleaning our teeth all the time. And so it can become a mindful activity. So right from the time that you decide to put the toothpaste on the, on the um, toothbrush, thinking about where it is in your mouth and, and the taste, et cetera, et cetera, it becomes a mindful activity. If you've got young children and they come and talk to you at the same time or you're encouraging them to clean their own teeth, then you might like to choose the shower as your mindful activity and hopefully you'll be left in peace there. Um, becoming immersed in, in listening to music or playing a musical instrument. If you do play an instrument, then you know very much how you have to concentrate solely on that. Doing your craft, as we've talked about, colouring in or doing a jigsaw puzzle. The colouring in part is interesting. There's a, um, a Melbourne psychologist who was working a lot with in the corporate world with very stressed um, clients and trying to teach them to meditate. And he found that, yeah, sometimes it worked a bit. Uh, most of the time, it just went out the window. And it certainly there weren't any ongoing effects in the people's lives. At the same time, he used to observe how children focused on when they were colouring in. It became their whole world. They just, that's just what they did. So he got some of these um, corporate people to do some colouring in. And he was quite surprised at the effect of how they relaxed 
and how they really focused in what they were doing with their colouring in. So we did a little bit of research into this and we found that the certain sorts of um, colouring in was better where there's repetition and there's boundaries, etc. And this is the, um, the beginning of all those adult colouring in books that we see in different places, news agents and Big W and all those places when we, uh, if we go shopping. And so he did some research into that and actually found that looking at the brains of people that were colouring in um, mindfully, they were getting the same positive benefits as those that were doing meditation mindfully. So I thought that was quite interesting. Washing up, vacuuming and dusting or hanging up the washing, doing the ironing, all those um, activities can become mindful activities if you just apply yourself to them when you are doing them rather than trying to solve all the problems of the world or the family or, or whatever at the same time. There's a well-known Vietnamese monk um, who's done a lot of work with mindfulness and his famous saying is, when you are washing up, wash up. When you are drinking tea, drink tea. In other words, whatever you're doing, just do it at the time. You know, not all of it, with dishwashers, we don't spend as much time some of us anyway, um, doing the washing up. But when you think about it, you can really, um, you know, feel the warmth of the water, feel the suds, you know, scrub the dishes, etc. It can become an, a nice mindful activity. Listening well. Now that's something that we are often in a situation where we're having a cup of tea with a friend and, and um, talking about things. And so that if you're listening to somebody who might be going through a difficult time or even sharing a, a, a good time, just giving someone your full attention as you listen and non-judgmentally can become a mindful activity and a very, very beneficial, beneficial activity. You know, a lot of people just need to talk. They don't need you to solve your problems. Um, so just giving that person your full attention um, as you listen non-judgmentally can become a mindful activity as well. It's, um, and there are other things I'm sure, as you, if you think about this, as you go about your day of life, you might think, oh, I could just focus on this now rather than trying to do this and this and this all at the same time. What can be quite beneficial is that you choose one of these activities for the week. You might think, right, I'm going to clean my teeth mindfully for the next week and see how I go with it. And of course, when you start, when you're cleaning your teeth, you're going to have other thoughts coming into your head. You just go back to cleaning your teeth as such as a mindful activity. And so that might be your choice for the week. Just something to bear in mind. When we want to establish a new practice, um, which might be doing something mindfully, or it might be meditating or whatever it is, it's been found that the brain takes uh, 21 to 28 days to lay down those new pathways. So if you're finding this sort of stuff hard to begin with, just give yourself a little bit more time. I actually decided a little while ago that I was going to stand on one leg while I was cleaning my teeth because I had just learned that balance was very important for slowing down cognitive impairment with older people. So I thought, right, um, I'll bring in some balance activity into something that I'm doing every day. So I chose to clean the teeth. Well, I've had various success with it. But what I have noticed is that now, whenever I go to pick up the toothbrush, it comes into my head, I've got to stand on one leg. So I have sort of laid down some new um, pathways there. I think um, one of the other things that I'd like to just mention is our tendency these days to use our mobile phones all the time. And this can take away opportunities to do things mindfully. For instance, um, when we're waiting for something, what do we do? That tendency to pull out our phone, check the emails, check the news, um, check the weather, whatever it is. Chances are that at the moment, we're going to find something on that screen that's going to cause us anxiety. So I really encourage you, you to um, not pull out the phone all the time. If you've just got a few moments, just spend it on your breathing or spend it on, on standing on one leg or doing something different like that. Don't, no, perhaps not that, just the breathing. And so just using your mobile phone um, less can be very um, beneficial in your um, in your day to day. Giving yourself those opportunities to do some um, mindful breathing instead. 
Right, so I just want to mention a few other things about mindfulness um, before we get to the end of this so that you can understand it. Um, it's secular and that just means it's not associated with any faith, religion or organisation. It is most one of the most well-researched um, forms of meditation um, showing beneficial changes to the brain and because of this research then it is becoming very much accepted and incorporated into um, the corporate world, for instance, um, into schools, education, and also into the, um, the medical um, world. And so you're not getting involved in something that's airy-fairy. It is well-researched and it has these very positive um, changes to the brain. And because of that, it can improve both our physical and mental health. And next time we're going to talk about the effects of stress and, and relaxation. And you can really see um, how we need to manage um, stress in our life. And mindfulness can also improve our relationships around us. And once again, we'll talk more about that um, at a later date. And but just because we're becoming more focused ourselves, then this can have um, quite long reach effects around us. Just another th um, thing to just mention, and I'll talk more about this again later, is that some people sometimes um, thoughts are misunderstood with some forms of meditation. Like with mindfulness meditation, it just acknowledges that thoughts are going to be there and they always will be. And we don't have to get rid of all the thoughts out of our mind to have a successful meditation and get the benefits from it. Um, some forms of meditation really do encourage that. But with mindfulness, it's much, much more user-friendly and in the sense that we don't need to worry about getting rid of all the thoughts out of our, our mind at the time. What we're going to do is we're going to recognise those thoughts, we're going to allow them to come and we're going to allow them to go. And this really breaks the train of thoughts and stops that excessive thinking that mulling over things in a non-constructive way, you know, that 3 a.m. time when we worry about this and we think about that and we catastrophize about this and that as, as well. So this is what mindfulness can do to our brains. It can, it, can, it can change that, it can stop. But at the same time, we don't have to think we've got to get rid of all the thoughts out of our minds to have a successful mindful activity. After all, the brain is actually designed to think and it's important that it does think a lot of times. And so we just acknowledge that thoughts will be there and we don't get stressed about the thoughts as such. So I think that's um, about enough for now, but I just would like to finish with a mini meditation. So if you just like to join me and um, just sitting where you are, gently close your eyes and take a deep breath. Just breathing right to the bottom of your lungs and sighing out any tension, allowing your shoulders to drop. And another deep breath, just checking this time that it goes right to the bottom of your lungs. Once again, sighing it out and allowing your shoulders to drop. And again, breathing in deeply and relaxing as you breathe out. Now just for a moment, just allow your breathing to return to its normal, natural rhythm and just focus on that breath. Feeling the flow of your breath. And now just gently open your eyes, have a little stretch and you can return to the, your daily life. Return to doing whatever you need to do in a more relaxed state. Just something I thought of then that um, as you practice this breathing, just for 30 seconds, for a minute, whatever it is, it, um, you become more in tune with your body. I've just noticed this myself. Whenever I sit down to have a few quiet moments in any way, that my shoulders are often tense. And so I've just learning that about myself and learning that about my body, it's became, 
it's made me more conscious of my the tension in my shoulders. So I'm more able to actually physically relax that and get rid of that tension. So as you um, become more aware of doing these mindful practices, then it helps you to tune into your body and, um, and become familiar where you do hold that tension. And, and that can be very beneficial in letting it go. Anyway, um, I wish you all and um, happy practicing and I hope you find this all useful and um, I'll see you next time. So thank you.